Amazing. Yes, so welcome guys uh, to our Discord, to our community call. Uh, we're going to share some community updates today, uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, some up and coming stuff that's happening. Uh, then VJ, our product lead, will give you some insights and news uh, from the product side of things, uh, what's happening, what's new. And we also have some cool stuff on Discord that you can actually participate in. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that as well. Um, then Mike will talk about Web3 Gaming and how Superfluid is making its way to GameFi and Web3 Gaming space. Um, we're really, really excited for that. Um, and then Vincent is going to give a little intro or overview to general distribution agreement today. This is something that our engineering team has been working uh, for the past months and super excited to actually launch it and show you guys as well. So yeah, we have a really cool agenda today. And as always, there's always room for Q&A in the end. So if you have any questions, any comments, uh, or anything you want to present, feel free to do so. We can either pull you up on the stage or you can ask uh, your questions in the chat and we will address everything there. Uh, so yeah, let's get on with it. So quick update from the community side. A few weeks ago, there was the first Ethereum meetup happening in Tallinn. Um, that was really, really cool. Uh, there were around 100, over 100 people coming together in the Baltics for the first time uh, to um, meet other Web3 people and kind of get the community together. Uh, and obviously, as some of you may know, uh, our engineering team is based in Tallinn. So obviously, Superfluid was there and our CTO gave a talk about frictionless money and how Superfluid works. So it was a really cool event. Um, and we had speakers from Polkadot, Polygon, uh, Alphabill, and many other different little projects uh, who are locally building there. So it was a really cool community event. Um, uh, and also why it's important to mention to you, so if, if you are around in the area, in the Baltics, in the Nordics of Europe, uh, the next year, uh, there's actually going to be a three-day hackathon um, in person organized uh, by the team uh, locally there. So if you want to visit the region or yeah, want to hop by, then definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, we will be there present as well, potentially. Um, then the next update is a new Wavepool web page. So as you all know, we are running... Uh, our monthly community uh, hackathon called the Wave Pool that Sunny from our DevX is leading. Uh, and we're happy to announce that we have uh, created a new cool uh, landing page on our website for this. So you can find all the Wave Pool information on our, directly on our website um, together with the project submission countdown. So there's a live countdown now available for you to see uh, when to submit your projects. Um, to make sure you are all on time. Um, and there's also information about goal sponsors, um, any questions you may have, everything can be found on our website now, uh, which is really cool. And as you know, this month's goal sponsor is Gelato. So if you are building anything cool, let us know uh, in the chat or on our Discord, and we're happy to uh, preview and take a look uh, what everybody is building. So yeah, little update on that. And then some early alpha on something that Sam uh, from our DevX team also is building for our Discord. That's super cool. We call it the Super GPT. So it will be a little bot uh, that's going to help our community members on Discord with any kind of super fluid related questions or ideas that you want to help it generate. So basically, it's a little bot built on AI, and you can um, tag the bot ask your question and it will generate an answer for you. Now, obviously we do have to disclaim that this is something new and it's built with AI. So it will be in beta version. Uh, we're aiming to launch it next week. Um, all the instructions and everything will be, uh, will be shared with you all on our Discord, but we do have to say that um, some of the answers and information might be a little faulty just because it's something new that we're building. So bear with it. Uh, and we hope that everyone can test it out and 
have a little fun with it and uh, maybe it can bring some cool value to the community as well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it from my side for now. If you have any questions or any comments, put them in the chat. Uh, but otherwise, I'm happy to give the stage to BJ. Sweet. Thanks, Victoria. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, cool. Here you go. Um, so uh, this month, we actually have a bunch of stuff to update on, um, not just based on what's coming up in the future, but stuff we're about to ship now in the next couple of weeks. So uh, excited to share a combination of developer tools um, for the builders out there, as well as new features coming to our, our dashboard and some of our end user products as well. So um, uh, as hopefully you heard last time, uh, we presented here. And we are getting close to the launch of our Superfluid Subscriptions SDK. Um, and so in the next couple of weeks now, um, we'll have the first versions of this open sourced um, for you guys to go around, go and play around with, um, as well as some things that you can just click through as a non-developer um, to see what using Superfluid, uh, using Subscriptions with Superfluid can feel like. Um, we really want to encourage people to get signed up for the, for the June uh, wave pool, um, which is coming up soon. Um, and uh, um, hopefully build some stuff with this uh, kit for that uh, hackathon. Uh, so excited to see that in your hands. Um, we're also very soon adding um, a permissions and allowances feature to our, uh, um, our dashboard so that when you're building stuff that involves our ACL permissions or you're using features that use our ACL permissions, uh, it's way easier for you to go in there and make tweaks and configuration um, and test things out. So. Uh, look at that for, for an advanced permissions and allowances uh, UI. And the last thing is that we are updating our, our new our Flow NFTs to a, a new variant. So um, you'll actually see that uh, some of your old Flow NFTs after this upgrade um, will no longer be functional. Um, they won't show, uh, they won't correctly be burning, et cetera. Um, but um, we're replacing them with a new set of in and out NFTs um, that we can upgrade over time to add new features to. Uh, and this is more like the final um, version of our NFTs now um, with a brand new design. Um, then things that are coming up soon. Um, after that, um, we're adding auto wrap to the dashboard as well. So those of you who are paying payroll or, or want to set this up for some long running payments, um, you'll be able to reach out to us to get access um, whitelist for an auto wrap feature, which will automatically wrap uh, from your underlying balance. Um, those of you who are building out there will know we have contracts for this, but finally we'll have a dashboard feature that uses it. Um, it is already available today for people who are using vesting, um, but now it'll be, be available to people doing other payments as well. Um, we're also working on a couple of things for developers um, that I think uh, will be interesting to you. Um, we are migrating away from our old way of managing super token lists um, and to a super to a token list uh, based approach, which is much more standard in the industry. And so you'll be able to consume a list of super tokens uh, from a JSON file um, as kind of uh, standardized by Uniswap. So hopefully that helps streamline processes for builders out there in using super tokens with other types of apps and with integrations. And lastly, um, the GDA general distribution agreement is coming to testnet soon. Uh, I'll leave Vincent to talk more about that one because it's really exciting. And then later, um, we have a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, we're working on a starter project template for those of you who want to get up and running quickly with Superfluid. Uh, we're taking all of our experience with our SDKs and generally the evolving Superfluid protocol over the past couple of years and uh, wrapping them together in some new starter template exa examples. Um, and we'll also be, be building a super cool example app around this. So I know that this is something that people have been asking for for a while. We want to get people stuck into building DeFi with Superfluid, uh, and we think Superpool is a great building block for doing that. So we actually want to wrap a, um, a UI around the uh, existing open source contracts for it, and we're going to spend a bit of time on that uh, and sharing that example with the community. And then the rest of these things, I think, um, you know, we can dig into in more detail in future waves uh, of this uh, um, presentation, uh, where we'll be closer to talking about them. But uh, um, we, we want to we want to be working on things for developers um, to get up and running more quickly um, with production projects on Superfluid. So that is our, our focus in this roadmap. Uh, and we're excited to have you join us along the way. Um, in a slight change from previous uh, iterations of this, do want to encourage people to get stuck in on Discord as far as giving us feedback. Um, we have our, our request channels uh, and we'll also be having the roadmap elements on 
Discord very soon for you to go and dig into and give us the uh, uh, details and what you'd like to see there or, or any kind of ideas for future roadmap items that we might add. So definitely want to get your take on uh, uh, what you think we should build next uh, and what you want to see in upcoming features as we, as we let you know our plans. Uh, as always, thank you for your feedback. Awesome. Thank you, Vijay. Really cool. And uh, yes, like uh, Vijay said, uh, don't be shy to give us feedback. Uh, tell us your ideas, uh, what you want to see happening uh, with Superfluid product or protocol. And now the roadmaps will be available on Discord directly. So if you go through our channels, there, there is a one forum post for protocol roadmap and one for product roadmap. So definitely do leave your comments, upvotes, um, and engage with different elements there. We're happy to evolve you there as well. Uh, so yeah, do check that out for sure. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, uh, put them in the chat. We're happy to address them there. Uh, but otherwise, Mike, if you're ready, the stage is yours. Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. So as you can see, I have a different background than usual. And that's because I'd like to talk a little bit about gaming. Uh, we have not spoken about gaming much uh, for the last year. And we have seen quite a few games interested in building with Superfluid and using the protocol capabilities to stream assets in real time within the game. So let me just try to share my screen right now. Tell me if you can see it. Um, there we go. Cool. Should be yep. live right now. What? Awesome. So, um, so yeah, games have been um, quite interesting lately for us because we have seen a lot of potential for superfluid technology being built um, inside gaming. Um, we we love working with games. We we have been working with games since last summer, and um, so far. We have seen um, interest mostly in uh, asset streaming with tokens and games. So today I would like to cover a little bit about uh, what we can do for games in Web3 and why Superfluid is interesting for games overall. So let's uh, move on to the first use case. So we have seen games are struggling to monetize and sometimes they issue their own tokens, they drop NFTs, but ultimately they are looking for a revenue model which is sustainable over time. And so we can use Superfluid to charge subscriptions um, for games. So for example, you can gate access to paid features, levels or areas um, via automated recurring building on chain with Superfluid stream. Uh, this can be baked into the game itself or it can be via external checkout or service provider. But you have seen that this is like a, a nice way to charge subscriptions to get access to extra content or feature. What's interesting about it is that you can use it also for some novel applications. So for example, you can have a legendary sword, which is only discoverable for in, you know, if, if you're being, for example, streaming a donation to a temple, right? Um, so now that that opens up a whole new set of use cases where the subscription might be literally baked into the game itself. And then the game developers can, you know, take a cut of the donation to the temple or can redirect that to other players as well to create like an in-game economy. So that is pretty powerful. And we love to see more games take this on. Another use case is, is rental of in-game assets. So, you know, we just spoke a lot about NFT rental. Uh, but you know, when, when, when games, uh, get into the stage, uh, we see the NFT game, uh, step up substantially. And so what you can do is, for example, you can rent some land via a stream with no ongoing gas fees, um, and then redirect this rent stream to the new owner when the land is sold and changes hands. Right. So you can effectively change, you know, if, if the, if the owner of the land changes, the stream is redirected to the new owner already automatically on chain. Um, you can also rent an item or an avatar by opening a stream. Um, and that's very interesting because, uh, you know, we have seen that NFTs normally are kind of stuck to the owner. It's really hard to move them from the wallet. But if you code the game to recognize a stream to the asset owner and you allow the game to leverage that asset, even if it's not in the wallet of the user, then you can basically rent NFTs in a scalable way. Um, the other use case we are very excited about 
is this idea of evolving or dynamic assets. Um, effectively, these are assets that can change over time based on tokens that are streamed to or from them. An idea of how this can be used is, uh, you know, you can upgrade player owned characters in real time as tokens are streamed. So for example, your character can evolve over time if you pay for it. Uh, or you can stream water tokens to a plant NFT that will make it grow over time. So you will see the, the plant grow uh, as you stream H2O tokens to it. Or the opposite, you can have a sword that actually loses value unless you pay to maintain it, to maintain it sharp. So effectively, you have to pay a stream to maintain the sword, preventing it from deteriorating the performance. Uh, so those are pretty interesting ones because are novel and they are not really seen in crypto much. And nobody has been tying a kind of payment stream to an evolving NFT so far, especially in game. So we're looking, we're very excited to see some games pick this up. We also have the last use case, which uh, is probably the one that leverages Superfluid at its most powerful form, which is you literally bake streaming in the in-game economy overall. So, you know, in-game, normally games have some sort of resources like power, energy, you know, mining resources like gold, et cetera, et cetera, that are consumed uh, in transactions and users have to say, claim those resources every now and then or show up every time, like 24 hours to mine the resource. And with Superfluid, you can effectively stream these resources in real time. So, you know, for example, standing in front of a fountain could give you H2O tokens that you can spend as you receive, right? Or you could, for example, earn, you know, mineral tokens as you're mining. And so you can kind of keep mining over time without having to claim them, to have them onto your wallet. And you can spend them as you, as you receive them. Or you can activate a power plant and electricity tokens in your wallet are decreasing as you pay for activating it in real time. So those effectively are part of the in-game economy. And we would love to see, you know, games that embrace the protocol to such a depth that it literally shapes the entire in-game experience. Now, this sounds maybe like, you know, a, a lot of novelty, but um, we have one game that have actually already embraced the protocol. And you probably have heard of it already because we had them over in our community call earlier. But, you know, Planet IX has been able to basically create a sustainable revenue model by using superfluid subscriptions at scale. Um, what's interesting about this is that they were able to start 12,000 streams in the first 72 hours, and they peaked at 28,000 subscriptions at some point, and then it went a little bit down to like 22,000. Um, so that is most likely the very largest subscription system ever built with crypto in terms of mere numbers. And it's, it's just one of the items they're working on because we have heard a little bit told us that they are working on other things as well, right? Um, so in this case, you have no need for recurring transactions and is a set of forget experience for the users. So very, very excited to have games um, starting to explore Superfluid protocol. And in order to be part of this uh, community, participate in some tournaments and, you know, uh, actually, you know, play together with the gaming industry, we have decided to join the Blockchain Game Alliance as of last month. So effectively, we, we had a presentation earlier this week with them to kind of showcase what Superfluid can do for games in Web3. And we are just very, very excited to uh, welcome any game that wants to bake uh, some of this technology into what they do. Um, that if, if you are interested in gaming or you want to know more about what we can do for game, you can head to superfluid.finance slash games, uh, or you can scan the QR code here on the screen. We love to talk to you. We love to explore further use cases and bring this, you know, broader into the gaming industry. So reach out to us and let's start the conversation here on Discord. And yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mike, for the presentation. If anyone has any questions or any comments, do feel free to use the chat, uh, chat box on top. Um, also to mention in regards to gaming, um, we do have several projects from different hackathons 
who have built Web3 gaming uh, projects with Superfluid already, especially around the rental, uh, gaming asset rental side of things. Um, and they have been a really cool project so far. So this is, this is an area that we definitely want to expand in. Awesome work. Thanks, guys. <laughs> cool background, Mike, someone is saying. Awesome. Yes, we fit right into the gaming community, Al. Awesome. Yeah, then if no one has any questions, uh, do we have Vincent here? Vincent, feel free to come on stage. Oh, yep. hello, hello. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, let me uh, share my screen. All right. Can you still see my screen? <clears throat> yes, we can. Awesome. Jim, so today I'm going to be talking about the General Distribution Agreement V1. Uh, this is a new agreement in the Superfluid Protocol. So just to give a brief overview of what I'm, what I'm going to be going over today. So I'm going to start with explaining what is the GDA V1? Uh, why do we do this? Why GDA V1? Uh, how is it implemented? Um, and then I'll be going over something new called the Solidity Semantic Money Library very briefly. Uh, some new concepts, uh, putting it all together, and finally some examples of what could be built. So to start, uh, what is the GDA? So you you probably already know what the constant flow agreement is. This is just one-to-one -one money streaming. Alice streaming money to Bob every single second. And you probably already know what the instant distribution agreement is. This is one-to-n transfers, instant transfers, that is. So you distribute uh, a token to n uh, participants. So the general distribution agreement is uh, a new primitive that enables one-to-n streaming. That's the main addition. So now you can send one-to-n streams to infinitely uh, great, greater numbers of people. Uh, keep in mind that it still allows the previous one-to-n instant transfer payments. So we still allow instant distributions with the GDA agreement itself. But the main new primitive is one-to-end streaming, which gets unlocked by this new agreement. So why GDA? Well, like I said, it mainly unlocks this new uh, use cases with a new primitive, which is one-to-end constant flows. So you can imagine Alice streaming to 1,000 different uh, pool members or people in a single transaction. So how's it implemented? Uh, very brief implementation details. It's similar to the constant flow agreement and the IDA in that it is an agreement, so it has a lot of the same uh, structure there for those who are familiar. Uh, all of the agreement data is still saved on the super token contract itself. So this means that if you're building your custom super tokens, you own all of your own data still. Uh, finally, it heavily used, utilizes the Solidity Semantic Money Library under the hood. I'll talk about this next. So the Solidity Semantic Money Library is a new uh, solid, Solidity library for building Super Token V2. This is something that Meow has built. Um, and it provides some general payment primitives, such as shifting and flowing and uh, all these great things under the, underneath. A Super App Programming Model V2. This is still a work in progress. but uh, yeah, it's going to be quite different. And finally, uh, some highly reusable code experimenting with uh, functional programming within Solidity. Uh, additionally, this is what is being used to build a GDA in SuperToken V1. So that's the V1 of the protocol. Uh, there's also currently a StarkNet prototype of SuperToken V2 that's being modeled after the same library. So some new concepts. Uh, the main thing is that there's a, something called a superfluid pool. 
And uh, previously in the IDA, you had indexes, but now you have this thing called a pool. And a new contract is created for each pool uh, from the GDA. So whenever you want to create a pool, you actually create a new contract and people can interact with that contract. Only the admin can grant pool membership and pool membership is defined as whenever someone is granted greater than zero units and the admin is usually the pool creator. Uh, finally, anyone can distribute or do a flow distribution to the pool. So let's say I create a pool. I have uh, everyone here is a member, but anyone in, in the pool can distribute and anyone outside of the pool can distribute flows to everyone inside of the pool. So there's no permissions on that. So putting it all together, this is just gonna go through a simple walkthrough, an example of what it would look like uh, if someone were to create a pool and do a distribution. So let's say that Alice wants to start an investment DAO uh, where people can pool together their capital and uh, she would distribute the profits proportionally to a group of members. So the pool members based on their uh, deposits. So Alice first has to create a pool. Uh, so basically, based on how much you put into the investments, you should get the same interest out. For example, if someone puts one and someone puts 10, the person who puts 10 will get 10 times as much, which is fair. So each of the members uh, may have unique amounts of capital invested. So Alice can take this into account when she's updating the members' respective units. So let's say everyone in here is in this uh, investment DAO. Uh, and everyone has different uh, investment amounts. Uh, Alice can just distribute or set different uh, units for each person. So if someone uh, put in ten dollars and someone put in a hundred. The person who put in ten would get like ten units. The person who put in a hundred will get a hundred. And when a flow is distributed, they will get uh, the proportionally different amounts of uh, gains, I guess. So assuming that there's a constant yield retreat from, let's say, multiple fixed interest rate lending protocols, Alice can e execute a flow distribution uh, from that contract with a flow rate equivalent to the per second rate uh, the DAO is receiving interest. I hope that makes sense. And finally, each member in the pool will receive their interest every second and everyone is just happy now. So what can be built? Uh, well, I would say anything that you can build with IDA uh, can be built with GDA because the GDA is composed of the instant distribution agreement and also the constant flow distribution agreement, which is the one to end flows. Uh, you can have more streamlined DAO payments. For example, different sub DAOs may have different pools. You can build affiliate marketing streaming apps and you know anything you can imagine. There's no nothing stopping you. That's it for me. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Awesome. Thank you, Vincent. Really cool presentation. I'll quickly check the chat. Mark is actually asking, what if a pool is actively streaming and I add a new member? Right, if a pool is streaming and you update the units, the amount of flow rate that you're streaming in is still the same, uh, but the distribution of the stream will change, right? So you'd essentially dilute the existing pool members and that new person would be receiving their proportion. Does that, does that make sense? See? So if there if there is a big transaction for that, uh, what do you mean? Uh, there's a big transaction for that. What if there? I'm not really sure either. Uh, Mark, Mark, can you clear? Okay, it's tight. I think let's see. But you guys have been working on this for months now, right? Yeah, it's been an ongoing process back and forth. Yeah. 
Yeah, and this is something that Miao is building out in the open, right, on Twitch. He's streaming his sessions sometimes live on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can tune in whenever we do that. Uh, if I change units, the recalculation of the flow rates to each poll members. Um, no, so when you change, it's it works very similar to the ID. Uh, the transaction is not going to be huge. It'll be the same as um, it'll be it'll be the same. There, there's no need to change and recalculate and reset everyone's flow rates uh, like that. Yeah, so the there there won't be like um, a limit to the number of members you can have in a pool. Yeah. Cool. And when when will it be available? Is it already available to build? Yeah, so I think we were, we're planning on deploying to test nets um, tomorrow, hopefully. Knock on wood. Uh, if not tomorrow, very early next week. Um, definitely within uh, this week or the next. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you can start testing it out there. But it's in. Alpha, and yeah, uh, unlimited pool members. You can. It's the same as IDA. So you you obviously still need to um, have have uh, the members set the members units beforehand. Um, but once that's set, you can have like, I don't know tens of millions of people if you want. If you have that many tokens to distribute to people, yeah. Wow. There, there's literally yeah no limit. So many streams. Hey, Juan. Juan is asking, any plans to deploy to Chiado? Knosis testnet. I don't think we have any direct plans, if anyone can clarify that. Uh, we do want to make sure whenever we deploy to somewhere, which usually our community does. We don't deploy ourselves anywhere. Uh, usually this is done by our community, uh, but we wanna make sure that if we launch somewhere that there's actually some use cases for, for Superfluid and um, for money streams. Yeah, good, good question, Didi. Like, if there's any any chain that we should be on, or you want to request that we deploy anywhere, do let us know why and what would be the potential use cases. This is usually something that we we ask when it comes to new deployments, um, just because we don't want to um, deploy randomly everywhere. And Nuno is saying we should support Chiaro just because it's Lisbon. <laughs> Nice guys. Any questions for Vincent for a GDA agreement? Anyone want to build anything with this new agreement with the new streams? It will definitely unlock some new possibilities uh, for you guys. Maybe also for the wave pool. Someone wants to build anything? I see multiple people typing in the chat. Wave pool, yes, awesome. I feel like this seems a great agreement, a new model for P2E. Yeah. It's definitely something that we have been working on for a long time. Too good to be true. Yes, Mark, time to build. Amazing. Mark, if you want to come on stage and share some ideas, feel free to do so. Do you want to share comments on stage? I can pull you up. Let me know. Okay, guys, that was our lineup for today for all the presenters.
Uh, we can open up the space for open Q&A, open discussion now uh, around all the different topics that were presented or just any questions or any topics around superfluid. So do feel free to uh, put them in the chat or request to speak if you want to come on stage. Um, we're happy to have you here with us. Juan is saying, I'm, I'm using Gnosis on other projects and finding good stable so far. I mean, we are deployed on Gnosis uh, chain, but I'm not really sure about the testnet. I think, VJ, maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we feel like we have a quite good testnet spread um, and we have a bunch of ETH available on our faucets for Mumbai in particular. Um, I think we're we're wary of deploying to new test nets just because it does sort of spread things out. Uh, and we'd love to see people trying out interoperability on test nets as well. I think that's a, you know, it's a great uh, goal for people testing out stuff to see how they can tune things together with other super preferred projects. But, um, you know, generally speaking, the development experience on, on most EVM test nets is similar enough that we'd, we'd, we'd rather keep to as few as we need to support for everyone. Absolutely. I see that Donoso is also in the audience. Donoso, are you here? Donoso is one of our ambassadors and also Devrel from Gelato. I'll pull you in here. Wait, did it work? Hold on. And also, if you're here, you have an invite to come on stage. GM. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, it was a problem with my device settings that I, my macro was not, uh, was not, um, allowed in the in the telephone i'm not with the laptop that's why ah no worries how are you how's it going fine fine actually um i'm i'm, I'm very happy to see that some some interesting projects in the wave pool for the superfluid and gelato as you know my two passions with regard to, to blockchain and uh, there are some some users asking interesting things let's see whether at the end of the day they achieve to build what they are thinking of, but I'm um, actually quite good. I'm today in, in the headquarters here in Gelato in, in, in Zug, in Switzerland. And uh, this is with these remote companies, probably like you, yeah, you don't meet uh, the people in the team, like once every, every six months you meet one and then the others, but happy to be here with you. Awesome. Headquartered in Switzerland, that's really cool. Awesome. How big is the Gelato team? Like super three, probably around 30. And here mm. in actually in Zug are only three or four. And in Switzerland, five or six. Then the rest are like we are spread in uh, mostly in Europe. But some, yeah. <laughs> cool, really cool. Yeah, I think for our team, the next time we, when we meet the whole team, it's going to be in in Paris, probably, during ECC, maybe. A couple of people are going there. Is Gelato also coming? Are you coming, Javier? Yes, we are coming, but we don't have any booth and uh, so far not plan to um, sponsor any hackathon. Let's see if that changes, because I would like to, to do that. But for the time being, there is nothing the planning, but we will be a handful of people there from Gelato. Cool. I mean, if you guys are not sponsoring, you can always hack with Superfluid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I would love that. <laughs> awesome. Yes, because we are sponsoring the hackathon there and we're putting out some cool bounties, especially around subscriptions. Uh, we will have our toolkit out by then so everybody can hack with subscriptions. And obviously it's GDA as well, what Vincent just uh, shared with us. So mm -hmm. cool yeah. stuff, cool stuff. 
Awesome. Matt in the chat is saying maybe we do something together with Superfluid Gelato. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hitting some side event ideas there. Uh, I see there's a question also in the chat. Is there any place to check all the hackathons in one place for Lisbon? Uh, specifically for Lisbon, I'm not really sure actually. Usually there are some um, like spreadsheets going around uh, with like different crypto events and hackathons, but they're like, they include all over the world. Um, but where are you based? Are you based in Lisbon? Pretty close to Paris, so you could come to East Paris. Do you have a calendar with all the events where Superfluid is going to be present? Actually, I do. I do, but I need to update this. I will share it uh, in the general channel on our Discord once I have it. I do have it. I do have. I just have to update this, but that's a good point. Um, I will share it. But yeah, just uh, just so you know, our next event will be ETHCC uh, in Paris together with ETH Paris, which is the ETH Global Hackathon. This is something that we are for sure planning. Uh, but yeah, this year we decided to kind of cut down a little bit on events. Um, but Paris will be a big one for us. Cyril, are you also coming? Awesome. Really cool. So definitely stay tuned because uh, we will be doing some side events. Um, more info coming soon. So obviously our community is more than welcome to join us. Actually, if you think that you need entry to HCC, um, I would say that the side events are actually way cooler than the conference itself. So even though if you don't get a ticket to ECC, I would still recommend you to just come to Paris, join the different side events and meet the people and network uh, around the conference and not necessarily at the conference. Um, so that's, uh, that's something that you could do. Or just come and hack, apply as a hacker at ETH Paris and come to the hackathon. July, let's go, yes. Is there an online hackathon bounties as well? Uh, there's always our monthly online hackathon called the Wave Pool, where you can submit your projects, build with Superfluid and our co-sponsors. That's something you could do. Uh, and guys, this is an ongoing, so it's happening every month. So if you have a new idea, something you wanna build in June, July, August, September, October, November, Feel free, you can always submit it uh, at the end of every month and win prizes. This is definitely something we encourage people to do. Um, thanks, Matt, for the link uh, to the wave pool landing page. Um, is there some kind of grants under Superfluid? Uh, not direct grants. We do have some uh, goal sponsored grants. I think one is with Silo blockchain. So if you build a project with Superfluid and you deploy on Silo blockchain as well, there's a grant up. I think it's up to $20,000 um, up for grabs. The same goes to push protocol. So if you uh, build with push protocol and Superfluid together, there's some grants that you can grab or apply for. Um, and then obviously uh, wave pool bounties uh, that we give out every month. This is something that you could uh, you could apply for or submit your project and potentially win. Awesome, so many questions guys, love it. I see that ECC this year is gonna be big. So I'm really excited. Yes, I see Yao already. <laughs> Yeah, already dropped some alpha in the chat. Uh, join us in our cafe, maybe. So yeah, we are planning to do some cool stuff there in the city. Oh yes, the OP grant, um, the Optimism grant is available too. So if you deploy an Optimism 
we definitely want to encourage or grow the money streaming uh, community there as well. So we have that grant open. Actually, I have grants, guys. There are all, all like co sponsored, but there are some up for grabs. I see there's some discussion going on around the test nets. Who else hacked during ETH Lisbon? How was it? I saw some pictures and it seemed like a big hackathon. Was anybody there in person? Oh, nice one. Do you want to come on stage and share how the hackathon was and what you built? Would love to hear more. Let's see, let's see. Let me know if you're if you want to come on stage and I can give you I can bring you up if you wanna share your experience. We have ten minutes left, so we can we can do that. Oh the internet is not that good, okay. Yeah, that happens sometimes when you're traveling. That happens to all of us. At the go working near the venue. Thank you for joining. It's great to have you. And let us know if you're if you build with Superfluid. We're excited to see what. Am I back? My Discord froze for a second. Amazing, amazing, guys. Do we have any questions? Any other topics to chat about? Otherwise, we can close the call. It's really great to hear all the updates from the team and from the community. Don't forget to submit your projects on time. We have the time countdown on our website for Webpool. So do check that out. Uh, and make sure you're submitting on time. Awesome, guys. If no one has any other questions, comments, we are happy to close the call here. Thank you all for joining. We had 13 days left, Matt says, uh, for the Waypool submissions for the May month. So you have some time. But yeah, stay tuned for all updates. Uh, we will share everything here on Discord. Um, I will share the community calendar as well. That was a good point. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that and yeah, have a great day and thank you for joining guys.